Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Amazing. We just got back from Arizona. I'm still recouping. I have some work going on in the house. You guys seen part one already of us leaving for Arizona. I'm in the process right now of editing our ride videos, basically of the new brand new Road Glide and Street Glide ST models. But before I show you guys those videos there there's just so much content so much good information on this trip that we did with harley davidson that i'm not going to be able to show you guys all in one video there's just too much too much footage so i'm basically going to break it down into probably five or six parts but in this video if you guys can please watch it to its entirety it is really really valuable information there is a lot of information out there as far as slow speed maneuvering a motorcycle and it's super important as well this information that i'm going to give to you guys is high speed maneuvering of a motorcycle and this would apply to any motorcycle so nick head of champ school along with the wyman brothers kyle travis and cody they basically gave us a crash course in basic instruction of how to operate a motorcycle on the track and you could also take this information and apply it to the streets we as riders i see it all the time people wiping out in corners they don't know how to manage a corner they come in too fast they don't know when to break they don't know how to take a turn and you see it all the time whether it's at tail the dragon back of the dragon or anywhere for that matter. This information, I would recommend for you guys to really watch it and listen and learn from it. It's obviously not everything, but it really is the main, the nitty gritty of how to operate a motorcycle, going into corners, coming out of corners, lean angle, etc. There's just so much valuable information. So watch it to its entirety. You could apply all this information into your daily riding. After this video, I have an awesome video for you guys to show you guys Kyle Wyman's championship race bike, like super up close. And then right after that, we're gonna be taking a ride with Kyle around the track in a very very interesting vehicle so stay tuned guys if you guys are new to this channel do me a favor hit that subscribe button and we'll see you soon What's up everyone good morning what a beautiful morning it is here in wilcox arizona at the indy motorsport ranch um, we were invited here if you guys are new to this channel we we're invited here myself and some other content creators on youtube to uh, test ride the new street glide and road glide st models and it is 22 degrees here unbelievable i thought i was going to come here from New Jersey and I thought it was gonna be nice and warm but it's actually colder here than it is back home but uh, it's gonna be going up to about uh, 62 degrees I believe and it goes up fairly quick but then after 6 p.m. it the temps drop back down pretty rapidly but anyway staying right there beautiful room I want to thank um, everyone that's involved here with Harley Davidson for uh, giving me this opportunity. Really appreciate it. Uh, awesome hospitality. Everybody has been absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Jennifer. Really appreciate it. And the track is actually right behind where we're staying. The track is all right there. I don't know if you guys could see the first turn. The sun just popped through the mountains. The landscape is like Mars. It is really, really wicked and cool, but uh, we're gonna have a great day. We're gonna be riding the new bikes on the track, and then we're gonna be take, we're gonna have lunch, and then we're gonna be taking the bikes out on these beautiful roads, uh, scenic roads here in Arizona, so can't wait. First time in Arizona, I'm really looking forward to this day. It's gonna be really exciting, so stay tuned, guys. Oh man, 
way too early. Oh, man. <laughs> Is Matt busy? First things first, well, Rob over here is yapping. We gotta eat. Some wakey wakey eggs and bakey. I gotta bother him. This is the champion right here. Yeah. Mr. Kyle, What's how you doing? On? Good morning. Good morning. Champion, good luck this year. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. You. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Gonna get to go around on track today. Can't wait. Excited? Can't wait. Yeah. You can teach us something. Yeah, a little something. Thanks a lot. A couple things here. Appreciate there. it. it. I told him, I'm going to ride a motorcycle and not take a nap. <laughs> We'd like to start off with introductions of yourself, if you don't mind. So just go one at a time, tell us who you are, what do you do, uh, what kind of riding you're doing, and we'll just kind of go through the group. How about that? Start us off, young man. Yeah, Jerry Palladino, yeah. uh, motor, a retired motor officer, yeah. and my main thing is teaching the police motor officer <clears> techniques <throat> to the average rider. Very good, love it. Glad you're here, Jerry. Thank you. John Bednar's uh, Cycle Fanatics YouTube channel. Okay. Have a performance bagger as well. We do nice. ride videos, yeah. upgrade videos, build videos. Great content. Yep. And you did a little track time, you said? So I, I did on yeah. Tuano, Aprilia okay. Tuanos. Terrific, yeah. terrific. Well, you're going to love this place. Yeah, I'll, absolutely. I'll, 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 sir. Uh, Robert Simmons, I'm an Italian NYPD Highway Patrol Motorcycle Lieutenant. And kind of just like Jerry. Walk the moto. Um, <laughs> just cut it out. Uh, yeah, just wrench on bikes. Enjoy riding Harleys. I've yep. uh, been doing it for five, six years now. And yeah, I love the motorsports. Uh, I'm doing. Uh, I got a YouTube channel, Morph Kid 87. And uh, my channel just consists of reviews, group rides, and just community. That's it. Awesome. 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 My name is Jess. I have the YouTube channel for Two Wheels, and it's all around good times, riding, traveling, camping, all things on two wheels. Love it, Jess. Thank you. I'm you. Erica Queen Sit. Uh, my channel is just about doing things you've never done, um, conquering fears, yep. and just positive vibes. I love it. Good. Glad you're here. I'm Case. Uh, my channel is TFL Bike, yep. and we're somewhere in between enthusiasts and journalists. So we like to bring news, but we also just bring a uh, I don't know, a bike guy perspective to the industry. Nice, yeah. great. Well, y'all realize you're the luckiest people on earth, right? Absolutely, yeah. so, yeah. absolutely. It's a really good deal. I've been a journalist since 84 and just always really appreciated it. So really glad to have you here. And we, Hardy Davidson is doing something that uh, I mentioned to a couple of you yesterday. I wish that others had done early in my riding career and racing career, journalism career. And that is bring in this champion's idea. What, what are the best in the world doing, uh, the best in the country doing to ride these bikes the best? And uh, is Bjorn still here? Yeah. So, uh, Bjorn, this whole <coughs> approach of uh, bringing expert riders in to help them ride this bike is because, is, is can the bike be ridden just about any way and have it work? How specific is this? It can be ridden different ways and work up to a point. Yeah. So things get going, things get closer to the limit, but I mean, the way we design these bikes, the way they're meant to be, to be ridden, is the same way you're meant to be ridden for a race bike or for any other type of bike. The skills are all the same. These guys are excellent at teaching such things. I appreciate that. We're the champion school and um, work with Bjorn's team, worked with a lot of Harley dealers over the years, and et cetera. A lot of police departments, high speed training. And uh, you think to yourself, well, I'm not going to ride at the limit. Okay, well, today, could be today, or could be very soon. You pop over the hill. On a road you've been many times, and you pop over the hill, it's been freshly graveled, and everything has stopped. And all of a sudden, you're at the limit. Today, you come down into a 50 mile an hour left hand corner and you get in there and it's 25 miles an hour to the right and some kids stole the sign and you're at the limit. So things that we'll get across to you and, and work hard on uh, with you this morning on the, on the track will be put into play hopefully the rest of your lives. And uh, the group we have teaching you, in fact, it's kind of a, new, a unique group. We're all national winners, um, a couple of national champions included, a couple of future national champions, I think, too. So it's, a, it's quite an interesting group. Uh, Cody Wyman, he's a, a Moto American national winner. Uh, grew up on dirt track, grew up at the heart of the dealership, as you all know, um, and rides. Uh, he's one of our lead instructors at Champ School. Kyle Wyman, a 10, <coughs> ten time national winner. Feel pretty good? Digits. Yeah, very good. good. <laughs> ten, 10 national wins and number, right. one, number one plate uh, in this deal. And uh, really won it from the front at the last race. One of our lead instructors, uh, one of our core guys. So Kyle Wyman, Daytona 200 champion. That's what I'm talking about. Something really good. 
Go up under. And Travis, natural winner again. 11. 11 natural winners. <laughs> There'll always be one more I want it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's great. And so Travis, natural winner as well, and uh, <clears> we have on our team. And my name is Nick Einotch, so I'm the CEO of Camp School, and this is a big deal to us, getting across these ideas. Yeah, so, a couple number one plates too. Right? I did, yeah. did, yes, sir. Back when they had wooden tires, remember that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we ran a maple, we ran a soft yeah. maple. Yeah. Back when techniques were totally different. Oh, yeah. Oh, fantastically yeah, different. Maybe not. Mm -mm, no, we've got, we got proof for it. So here's the idea. Here's what we're going to try to get across to you. Four things that we want to put to the top of your priority list. When you come in with different priorities, we want to move those around and put four things at the top of the list. And uh, Cody, you're Valentino Rossi for a moment. This is your bike. It rolls out for practice. It's final call. For, what are you doing? Yeah, Valentino Rossi, arguably greatest motorcycle rider of all time. Uh, each time you'll see him get on the motorcycle, before he gets on, he kneels down by that foot peg. Mm. And, you know, whether he's saying a prayer or whatever it is, he's getting his mind focused on understanding that he can do, he's about to do something dangerous. He's about to do something that could kill you. Let's put our brain focused on, on being in the moment and really just laser, laser focus. Uh, we know how important, how important it is. Um, a lot of things can happen on the street, a lot of things can happen on the racetrack, but really being in the moment, you know, what does that really mean? You know, kind of feeling your, feeling your toes and your shoes, you know, feeling that sun hitting your back, really just feeling all, all these senses and really understanding uh, where we are. These are, these are mantras, something you say or do before you ride. I think as a professional rider, you have to develop that. You have to get on these bikes with a mindset of, of, uh, of focus. So let's try one mantra, say it out loud, please. Where am I? What am I doing? Where am I? Where am I? What am I, what am I doing? Well, let me answer that question. You're going to ride a motorcycle you've never seen before, on tires you've never seen before, on roads you've never seen before. Uh, that's, that's where you are. So let's bring that focus level up. Um, every one of us has this way to get into focus. And then K-Dub, we're riding around, we're having a fun time, and we have to get refocused after a mistake. What do we do? What, what's the we plan? We make mistakes and, and we get over them. Right, we start start a lap at the next apex if we're on a track. You, you start you, you refocus on what's up ahead, hmm. and uh, you know this both in riding and in life. Yeah. Right, it's good to refocus, get get back. You know, fo getting focused to start your ride is fairly simple. Getting refocused when something goes wrong on your ride is a little more difficult. So something that we really talk about is just getting refocused on what the task is at hand. Travis, how many perfect races, how many perfect laps have you run in your life? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so riders, all, all you uh, personalities that have to have everything perfect, you gotta get over that, you gotta put it behind you. If you make a mistake, start, start your lap immediately. Start your ride immediately. So I'm gonna say, when you make a mistake, I want you to say, start your ride immediately, restart your ride immediately. When you make a mistake, you, start you, start right right you have to have this in your mind because the mistakes can be pretty big, <clears throat> right? You can be tossed out of the seat, rup, the thing lets go and you're up on top, you break the windscreen with your helmet and you got to land back on that seat and Lord, and then start, restart that lap immediately. <laughs> and, and it's a huge part of, it's, it's our first core <clears throat> champion's habit. This is the idea that we're going to make mistakes and the people that worry about them will, will go across the center line two, two miles later. Yeah, how many times have we seen on film or champ school will film behind and... and review that and they make a mistake in turn five, mm -hmm. they're shaking their head, end up running off the track in turn eight because they're still thinking about that. Yeah. Right? Have you so, seen it? Yep. So last year I had the season's biggest moment and biggest save, <laughs> number one. Um, and it almost threw me out of the seat. It was a pretty wild ride. Had to regroup, hammered back on the gas, got into the next corner and ended up coming home with a top five finish. So. Yep. Good job, brother. So this is how we start this school. Number one thing is be focused, get get refocused, get over those mistakes immediately, and we'll be yelling to you some things. And I'll tell you, the top of my mind right now is probably the top of your mind right now. If you're getting on your bike, say what you're thinking right now. Cold, cold tires. tires. Cold tires. Say it out loud. Cold tires. Cold tires. And if you walk out of breakfast, you say cold tires to your friends, and your brand new friend doesn't crash downhill in the first right-hander because cold tires, that's the top of our brain right now because that is our main priority, getting those tires warmed up. K-Dub, second thing we think really counts. What do we really focus So we're going to talk about grip and how to live within the, the confines of grip. So we got this front tire here and this tire is only capable of so much. It has a hundred percent of what it's capable of. Can we all agree on that? Yep. Grip is not unlimited. So on a, on a day like today, once it heats up, we've got a dry track, 
we got warm tires after a couple laps, we got a lot of grip. You know, we can really, we really use some lean angle. It's a sliding scale. You know, yesterday we had a little bit, of, a little bit of sleet in the morning. The grip was a little bit low. We still have 100 percent or 100 points of available grip, but that that scale is much lower. Okay, so we think about the front tire be having grip between lean angle and brake pressure. Grip is lean angle and brake pressure. So if we're leaned over at zero percent of lean angle or zero points of lean angle, we can use maximum braking in a straight line. If we're leaned over at 80 points of lean angle, we can use 20% or 20 points of brakes can go to this grip before we lose traction. Now, like you said, it's a sliding scale, but where we see our biggest issues is riders that are too aggressive. Let's say they're grabbing 40 points of brakes at all times, but on a nice warm day in a parking lot with no lean angle, you can kind of get away with it. But it's when the pace is up or the grip is down that we, we lose grip immediately when we're past 60. Okay, so we want to load the tire before we work the tire. We want to sneak that brake on to push that contact patch against the asphalt, literally put more rubber against the asphalt. Once we've loaded that tire, we can really ask it to work. Our grip goes way up through the roof. I like this idea. Say that loud, please. Load the tire before you work the tire. Load, load the, the tire, tire before you work, work the tire. The nice thing about y'all, can you can you can start taking these messages in your everything you do. Just get this idea. So as we get towards towards the corner. Uh, in this case, we're talking quite a bit about cornering with our throttle open. We close the throttle to the brake lever. As we close the throttle, weight starts to go forward. We sneak on the brakes, weights go forward, weight goes forward. And Kyle, you're talking about that fork has to move forward, then the tire gets loaded, doesn't it? How long does that take? It doesn't take a very long time, but we can't stab the brakes, we can't grab the brakes. We want to be really smooth with the first 5% of our input. Yeah, let's take those verbs. Let's try to eliminate those um, from our vocabulary. You know, for you, you guys really have a great audience and people are gonna listen to y'all. So when you hear grab, stab, um, flick the motorcycle in, all these verbs are really kind of giving us a, a, a false sense of, of what the motorcycle is, how the motorcycle is designed to be ridden, right? And Kyle, you're talking a little bit of, we were talking, mentioned cold tires. So, you know, how do we really get heat in a tire? How do we generate heat in this front and rear tire? Really, we have to we have to squish this carcass to generate friction. So accelerate, brake in a straight line is best. We just push that tire against the asphalt, accelerate, brake, accelerate, brake. Weaving is just going to warm that outer edge. We need to warm the tire from the inside out. So that's how we can really create some heat. So we load the tire before we work the tire. At lean angle, we can sneak that brake on. That tire will take a tremendous amount of load. I can really put all my weight into this thing, but an abrupt load, you're down immediately. Everybody see that? At the same lean angle. Okay, so you may have heard, don't brake in a corner. Don't use your front brake. Every time I brake in the middle of the corner, my bike stands up. If you grab it, it will. So the initial input into that tire, front or rear, it's gonna be everything. Can you pick up one point of brake pressure when you're at 99 points of lean angle mid corner and tighten your radius and miss that car who's coming across the center line? Yes. That's what we're talking about. The drill for that riders is uh, you, while your buddies are flapping their lips after breakfast, you stand by your bike and roll it forward with one point of brake on. Your brake's wrong, but you're, you're rolling your bike forward. That's that one point. These riders have a quarter point hand. They can pick up a quarter point. They can pick up a quarter point to slow and tighten their radius. We'll talk about that in a moment, where their comp competitors cannot. Their competitors have a three-point hand and they have problems with those ideas. So the, the whole thing here is that you can coach yourselves. If you, if you roll your dirt bike out of the truck and stab your brake, good or bad, uh, complete fail, complete fail. You ride your bicycle, stab the brake lever, complete fail. You drive in your truck, you stab that brake, complete fail. So all of a sudden you start to live this whole life because at the limit, in the gravel road, at this lean angle, you're now at 99 points of lean angle in the gravel, and you grab three and you fall down and you tell your buddy that, oh, it's gravelly. No, you had a three-point hand, you couldn't pick up that, that quarter point that you needed. So, riders, this is what we start to do. So when you feel that initial break, you gotta fix it. Don't wait for one of us to come up and say, hey, that was too aggressive. Fix it yourself. So now you start to coach yourself in this idea. And what we're this, really talking about, yeah. corner entry. Yep, yeah. corner we're, entry. We're, we're talking about corner entry so much because getting out of the corner, accelerating, fairly straightforward, yeah. right? If the bike's pointed and the road's opening up, we can accelerate, we can take away lean angle, we can add some <coughs> throttle and enjoy it. Exactly right. Corner yeah. entry is where we really have our, our issue. So we go to the brakes when we get nervous, hmm. really. I mean, there's no brake markers on the street. 
There's brake markers out here, but there's no brake markers on the street. So when you see that, hey, I gotta slow this thing down, we go to the brakes, we sneak that brake on. What happens to that front tire? Mm. Nice. We get that contact, contact patch, patch. we put more rubber against the road. Maybe we've been taught, do all your braking in a straight line, get off the brakes before you turn in. Okay, we give up that contact patch. We wanna turn in on less rubber. Let's get rid of that idea. We're talking about putting load into the tire with our brakes and then trading off braking points for lean angle points, keeping that load as we tra trade off for cornering load. Instead of trying to flick the bike and get that load back, we wanna create it and keep it as we add that load. How about this? Put add this in your brain. Angle. If your brake light goes off, on corners you brake for. If your brake light goes off, before you turn, you'll never get the sport right. You'll never be the rider you wanna be. You just will never, you'll, you'll just kind of struggle along and never get it. We'd like you to go to the point where you go to the brake pressure when you're nervous and tip in with the brake light on. And just say it out loud, tip in with the brake light on. Tip, tip in with, with the, the brake light on. on. Be, you'll start this morning and you'll be all done with your brakes before the <clears> corner because it's a brand new road. We'd like you next lap to go to the brakes later or lighter so you tip in with the brake light on. And all of a sudden, Kyle, they're riding the bike the way the way you guys rode it to go one, two. Say the best riders in the world focus most on the last 10% of their brake release. Really, really important, that last bit of release as they're finishing their lean angle and getting direction out of the corner. So they're focused on the, how they, not just how they pick it up, Trav, how they let it go. Yeah. And you're seeing, Kyle, you're seeing that contact patch where the rubber meets the road, really stretch out and grow and give the rider more grip, more tire to, to ride on. And that's what you see in racing. Or that's what you see, uh, you know, at the at the at the pointy end of this sport. The people up front, the people that are winning races, they are riding on more rubber for more time. You go on a street ride down through the canyon. That one rider who's getting away from me a little bit, they're making that tire bigger for more time, right? Stretching out that contact patch for more time, being in control and recognizing that we can we're going to use those brakes all the way down in there until we're happy with a couple things. We're, we're talking about something that people, a lot of people call trail brake. And you know, we truly believe it's not an advanced technique because just, just having one point, just having those pads mm -hmm. dragging on the rotors, half a percent of braking is enough to get that load engaged. Mm -hmm. We've got that contact patch built as we're turning into the corner. I want to ride on more rubber. As, as you guys probably know, when you have that load, you can feel the bike. You can feel what's happening, right? We have that ability to adjust. Maybe we don't need a ton of brakes but we're mid corner, we've got one point of brakes on and we see that gravel and we got to get underneath it. We don't have to get that brake lever on and get that load and get that tire squished out. It's already there. We can squeeze a little more and make it underneath it. That's, that's what starts to change your life. You enter the corner with the brakes on, brake light on, so when things happen. And so this idea, Cody, you're coming down into an unknown corner. You roll off the throttle onto the brakes. The throttle's completely shut on the brakes. We don't want to use brake against the throttle, especially front brake against the throttle. So make sure that that's being taught out there, but we don't want to do that. Close that throttle completely to the brake lever. You'd say nobody good does that. Perfect, perfect, yeah. that's right. Nobody at the, at the top does that. Uh, could, could you repeat that? Yeah, we don't want to have the throttle open against the front brake. We want to close the throttle completely to the front brake. So you go to the brakes, because you're, why do you go to the brakes? Why do you go to the brakes? Because you're, you're slow do down. it the way he said it. Yeah. Nervous. Nervous, it. Go to the brakes when you're nervous. Sure. This will help so many of you. Yeah, you're driving on the street, approaching a stop sign. When do you go to the brakes? When you feel like, all right, I gotta start slowing this. Now. If I, yeah, yeah, if I don't do this now, I'm gonna roll through the stop sign. So you got your brakes on. You're tipping in the corner, and Cody, you can use that brake lever until you're happy with two things. What are they? Yep, speed and direction. Speed and direction, right? So we'll start to really work on this. And as the pace comes up, we'll pull the brakes on earlier, but we'll probably be letting them go. Pretty much the same spot, right? The best riders <clears throat> in the world will let go that brake lever almost at the same spot, the slowest point of the corner, when they're happy with speed and direction. So, K Dunn, to win, to win podium on sewer bike, win on this thing. What's your variance in lap times over the 20 lap? 25 laps. You know, it's the fastest lap will be, you know, six tenths faster than the slowest lap of the race. Let me count that for you. One thousand. That was six tenths. Every lap he runs is within that parameter. Why? Because he, because he does the exact same thing everywhere, no, because he uses those brakes every time in the corner. If he gets in low under a rider, he uses the brakes to his happiest speed and direction out wide. Use tire, full fuel tank, happiest speed and direction. So once you start to ride like that, 
you don't let go of the brakes, you don't let go of the brakes for any other reason, then you're happy with speed and direction. And exactly. now then your life you know, changes. Every one of those laps is a little bit different because you know the fuel load burns off, the bike gets lighter, the tires go off, maybe you got lap traffic, you gotta go underneath somebody in a corner. The ability to be consistent is not your ability to do the same thing over and over and over again. It's actually your ability to adjust to everything that's always changing on the motorcycle. That's what allows you to be the consistent rider. So, little analogy real quick. Please. So, we're in our cars, we're gonna pull into the Walmart parking lot. <coughs> when do you go to the brakes? Whenever you see the turn coming up, you're nervous, you, hey, I gotta slow this thing down. How long do you use your brakes in your car to turn into the Walmart parking lot? Depends. That's a great answer, mm -hmm. it depends. Mm -hmm. You use them until you're pointed into it and you're slowed down enough not to run wide over the center line and run into that other car that's in the other lane. We use our brakes until we're happy with two things, which is speed and direction. When do we accelerate into the Walmart parking lot? When you have your direction. When you have your direction, not until you can see that the road opens up, you can unwind that steering wheel. Okay, so we're just taking a really basic 90 degree corner into a parking lot and saying, look, we're trail braking in our car. We don't accelerate until we can actually take away steering wheel. It's like we get into an off ramp off the freeway. We use our brakes down in there. If it tightens up, which a lot of them do, do you just un, you know, keep winding the wheel until you make the corner? <laughs> no, in your car, what do you do? You smoothly put some brakes on, the radius tightens up and you make the corner. When do you accelerate? Not until you see that, that, that off ramp start to unwind. Okay, so what we're talking about is really what we do naturally in our cars. And there's a lot of techniques out there. There's a lot of things that's out. Brakes, brakes off, power through the corner. Okay, what if the corner tightens up? Mm. All right, so we don't accelerate until we can see the road is clear, until we can see that road opening up. But ideally, we take that braking zone and we can move it into the corner, even if it's just one point of brakes, so we can keep that contact patch, keep that confidence, that adjustability in place. Why would we beat on this so hard? Because uh, you, may, you may not know this. But the last few studies have shown the number one fatal spot for motorcyclists is running wide in corners. Did you know that? Yeah. Running wide in corners. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine the rider lets go of the brakes, the fork rebounds, the bike is designed to go wide at that time. Bjorn's group designs the bike to quit steering when the brakes come off. So if they're off the brake too soon, their initial throttle too hard, and the bike runs wide. We'll talk quite a bit about that. Let's well, finish well, up. What we second. see is yeah. you know the bike runs wide, so. We don't ever want to give up on the throttle. No. Right, we're taught no, to stay in the angle. throttle, add lean angle. Oh. Okay. What if the it's pipe's like... already dragging on the ground? You're out of lean angle. Hmm. We can't tighten our corner, tighten our radius until we, we slow our motorcycle. So now this is my rear tire. Yep. I get the bike in. I go to throttle points. I add throttle points. I get the bike driving. It's running wide. So I just add lean angle points. You got to chill up your spine. You wonder why the sport's not growing? <laughs> that's been taught. It's all through the corner. So now you got the throttle open and throttle points plus lean angle points. And you try to lean it over, you start to drag, or just high sides where it pushes the front. So this idea of 100 points of grip, we're always playing with it, we're always thinking about it. Rear tire is brake points and, and lean angle points going in. We use a lot of rear brake on these longer wheelbase bikes. Uh, but we're really thinking about throttle and lean angle. So Kyle, I've got the bike in here, I've snuck open my throttle, mm -hmm. that takes weight off the front, it pushes weight in the rear, I sneak, you sneak open your throttle, it puts the weight and expands that contact patch. Is it time to accelerate? Maybe, mm -hmm. if we're in a position to take away lean angle, perfect. we can add throttle points, but not until that. There's some long radius corners out here. It's a really wonderful track, a wonderful road. And there'll be places where you hold what we call neutral throttle. And uh, Trav, neutral throttle, what's neutral maintenance throttle? What's this idea here? You're in the corner, you put the throttle up, but you can't go yet. What are you doing with the throttle? Just holding it constant, maintaining your speed or your line. Not spoken about. It's not spoken about enough. Everybody thinks breaker. Who's heard that breaker accelerate? It should be braking or accelerating. Neutral throttle is huge in your life. So now we're holding neutral throttle, and we're listening to what Kyle said. I'm not going to accelerate this motorcycle. Truly accelerate it, so I can see my exit. Take away lean angle. You really think about that off ramp. You know, oh. yeah. It's really hard to break all the way to the point where you can accelerate. So in that middle ground, you have to just hold neutral throttle, hold your radius, which we'll talk about next, until you can truly accelerate. And we see a lot of riders just not having that patience mid-corner in those long radius corners where it's like, well, I'm going slow, something must be wrong. No, you just have to simply wait until you can truly accelerate. 
He's beating those riders who go to the throttle before he does. Run away in the middle of the corner. I don't turn. it a little bit. It's not the rider that gets back to the throttle first. It's the rider that can get back to wide open throttle first. If we're talking about racing, if we're talking about pace, the first rider to the throttle, but then has to hold 10% <clears throat> because they're running wide and then finally gets the wide open here versus the rider that respects the middle of the quarter a little bit longer, gets pointed, gets direction sooner, can pick up and go right to wide open throttle soon. Yeah. And, and flip that over to the street. The rider that goes to the throttle too hard too early runs wide across the center line of the guardrail. So everybody, this is what you're chasing. You all have a voice. And that's why we're spending the time with you to get these ideas across. But boy, neutral throttle, it's huge in our lives. These guys run 200 horsepower sewer bikes, right? Cody's stepping up on, on, a, on a faster bike now. So this neutral throttle, man, it's everything. So let's just finish up this 100 points of grip idea. Uh, front grip is made up of two things. What are they? What two things make up front grip? Friction. Friction. Brake mm -hmm. pressure. Brakes and oh. lean. lean. Just, just the way we put it. You have different ways to say it, but we, we're putting it in a different way. Brake pressure plus lean angle. Throttle plus lean angle at the rear. Certainly brakes and lean angle going in. So if we decided, okay, when I, when, when I, when I grab the brake, I'm going to fix it. I'll never do, try to do that again. When I stab the throttle, I'll fix that. Do you think it's okay to flick the bike in the corner? If brake pressure and throttle are always going against lean angle, is it okay to add lean angle quickly? No. So get that idea. Don't think you're going to take those handlebars and flick that bike around because this tire doesn't know why it lost grip. It doesn't know if you stab the brakes or if you flick lean angle at it. You burst over that edge of grip. So everybody, this is what we're chasing with this idea. Don't flick it. Don't grab it. Don't stab it. When you start to get aggressive, fix it. And realize that in this case, the, the person who designed, right, the people who designed this motorcycle that's, that's based on the STs you'll ride, don't ride like what, that way. So... You're thinking to yourself, oh, I gotta ride as fast as Kyle? It has nothing to do with speed, does it, Kyle? Mm -hmm. it, it, has, it has everything to do with technique. Just the inputs, I like the it. way we input into the motorcycle. I like it. So, how's everyone doing so far? Good. Good. Points. Is, Good. Is, Questions? How long does it take to get somebody proficient at these, using these techniques? Truly, you know, I taught my wife Hannah how to ride on a Grom up here in the, in the skid pad. And the first thing we did was, roll the bike back and forth with, with the brakes on. And you can hear them drag against the rotors. And said, look, this is how you're gonna go to the brakes forever for the rest of your life, every time you touch it. And it's a lot easier when you start with somebody new. And what we did is we just did figure eights. Accelerate, brake, accelerate, brake, two cones. And, and really for that, it, it was, look, if you accelerate too soon, you can't make it to the next cone. If you don't hold the brakes on, you can't make it to the next cone to make that figure eight. And that's how we started. And, and truly, like, if you can give people this idea from the get-go, it's magic. Um, the other part of that is, you know, how we release the clutch. So teaching somebody how to ride for the first time, we do it with no throttle. Every bike in the world will idle away from a stop if you do it slow enough. So trying to get the timing of throttle against clutch. We've, I've seen a lot of people quit the sport on day one because they can't understand that timing. Well, let's put the throttle away, put your hand on the bar. Let's learn to clutch away from a stop. You'll get that smooth feel right out of the gate. Yeah, we have remarkable uh, uh, things happen, Jerry, here, because we started in this way. We start, and we do more on the two-day school. We have more time to do these things, but it can be something as simple. If you want to ride in the van, when we go in the van, if you want to just put your braking fingers over on your forearm, and as we go into the brakes, you'll get that brake feel. You'll feel, Cody and I will drive, you'll feel us pick brake pressure up, maximize it, trail it off, <clears> you get a feel for that. So in a very short time with a, with a person with desire, it happens very quickly. And I mean, we've done these young presidents deals where they show up, never ridden in their lives, and by the end of the day, they're lapping the racetrack. I saw Problems. you on a, a video teaching yeah. motor officers yes, on high speeds. That's right. yes, I forget sir. where it was at. Yep, yep. But how, how long class was that? That's an eight-hour class. Yeah, yeah. Champ PD. Yep. And, and I, I know you had to break some bad habits. You, yeah. How but, long did yeah. that take? But the, but you guys are so good. You guys are so such good riders. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. they, got, they got great yeah. feel. We had a couple little techniques, and uh, you know, you're also very used to training. That's the other thing about motor officers. They're very used to training. It goes it goes pretty quick. So. And I'm listening to I'm listening things. to Kyle speak. Yeah. But, yeah. but with us, yeah. it's all oh. rear brake rather yeah. than yeah. the front. Yeah, and we'll, we get we get you off that and get in the front. And we do a couple of things to show you that whole deal, we, which we can do later as well. And back to you know, 
the both these models have link brakes and they're doing that for a reason right you pick up a little rear, rear brake it's gonna gonna add some to the front and vice versa because again the motorcycle doesn't know if it's on the road and you're at the you know that off camber corner at the dragon or if it's at turn five at here at indy motorsports ranch all it knows is the inputs that it's getting right so all it knows is is the inputs that you're trying to put in the way it's designed to be ridden you know we keep saying this over and over but again you know these all these engineers you see you see them out here they're they've been testing this stuff for years and years knowing what's the most efficient way to ride a motorcycle this is it right here yeah. that's a key point bike doesn't know where it is so if you get home and you start to write about trail braking for instance brake assisted steering whatever you want to call it and somebody writes in oh dude i'm a, a you're you're teaching expert techniques the motorcycle doesn't know if you're a brand new rider street so this is what we're pushing pretty hard and i appreciate y'all listening to this 100 points of grip we good and if anybody can take a course at the track you'll learn more at the track okay, yeah. in one weekend than you will five years yeah. riding totally. that's without a doubt totally. and after you come off the track you don't even want to ride on the street yeah it's okay. just that's the yeah. feeling yeah. you get. Be, be ready. Uh, yeah. Every time I come off the track, like I don't even I don't ride for like four weeks. John, what do you think? Just one thing I wanted to hit on when Nick is talking about about what the bike and how we ride it. When we when we design these bikes, when we're developing them to handle well, the biggest compliment you can get, the biggest thing we're shooting for is that bike does exactly what I tell it to do. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do what I don't tell it to do. Mm -hmm. If I whatever I say, it does. So if you think about that, if you tell it to do something dumb, it might. So if you're stabbing, you're grabbing. The bike's going to be jumpy and it's going to be unsettled. But if you do it right and you do it smooth, the bike's going to do what you tell it to do and it's going to feel really good. So it fits right in with what they're doing. That's why, that's how we're trying to make these things work. Yeah. I have oh, yeah. question. Please, Is yes. the braking technique the same for bikes that are not linked? Like, yes. Mm -hmm. thing? Yeah, for okay. sure. Yeah. We we'll talk yeah. about like link brakes, you know, ABS, cornering ABS, traction control. They're all parachutes. They're great ways to, you know, stay within the limits of grip when we really go outside of them on our own, or we, we hit that gravel road, we run off the we run off the track, whatever it is. If you feel ABS immediately, you stab the brakes. Trash control light blinking on the dash as soon as you go to the throttle, you picked it up too hard, right? So all those things play into that. But you know, if you can sneak up to ABS, the edge of grip. You know, that's that's what we're chasing. Yeah. So and we don't know where the edge of grip is. None of us do. Hmm. So we have to sneak up on it yeah. to give those to get those signals back from the motorcycle to stay within them. You know, if we jump you guys aren't running grip, ABS on the yeah. bikes, right? Sorry. You guys aren't running ABS on, on the bikes. Bike? No, no, no. Because right. no, at a certain you know level, no, it's just for racing. Amount of yeah, feel, yeah, you of can course. Get more out of absolutely the braking power that that ABS would limit. Mm -hmm. yeah. You sometimes want the rear to lock gently, don't you? As you call in, yep. right? Sliding it into the corner yeah, yeah, things like that. Yeah. So number one plate holder, you're telling me you don't know how much grip there is? I don't. It's a great question we all have, right? On the street, on the racetrack, how much grip is there? Mm -hmm. how, what can I get away with? Well, remember pre-COVID? We used to have a school before COVID where we, the gods of motorcycle riding, would, <laughs> would, would touch you on the forehead and you would know, like, ah. Oh. <laughs> Total sarcasm, because there's no such thing. Yeah. It's a joke. Yeah, natural camp. Yeah. How, how do you figure this out? No, I mean, it's the edge of grip is out there, mm -hmm. and we're all afraid of it. Mm -hmm. We're no less afraid of the edge of grip than you are. We just understand that if you can really smoothly put those inputs in, you can you can sidle up against that edge of grip without blowing over it. If, I, if Cody's shoulder breaks at 20 pounds of pressure, I don't know where his shoulder breaks. I walk up and I go 22, I break it immediately. I'll show you what that is. Grab, right. grab the brake, right word or wrong word? Wrong. Wrong. Grab the throttle. Jump over the edge of grip. What we want to do is, is load that. So I'll sneak up that pressure. Zero, one, two, three, four, six, seven, nineteen, nineteen and a half, twenty, 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 twenty. 20, 20, 20. Feedback, feedback. When I start getting that feedback, I can almost crash, but I don't crash. What's the difference in your lives between an almost crash or a crash? Huge. It could be life. Right? Yeah, it could be. be. Excellent so analogy. This is how we really approach the sport. Um, we definitely have uh, brought a lot of things to you in the last uh, half hour or so, and um, there's, there's a little more to come. Yep. So. Just to elaborate on that a little more, we're talking about grip, right? We're talking about tires on the asphalt. The same thing applies here that it would apply to your car, your bicycle, your scooter, any motorcycle. Yep. 
both uh, Travis and uh, Cody teach at high-end car schools as well. So it's all the same. It's a limit, isn't it? And limit comes quickly. So this idea, let's be in the moment. Let's really get this mantra going. Let's get over the mistakes. Number two, let's just be super smooth with things. How we steer it, how we pick up brake pressure, throttle, just be super smooth. When you're not, just fix it. Just just smooth that stuff out. Realize that, that we can actually go to the shoulder to the grip pretty quickly, but not abruptly. That's a mistake. That's still pretty quick. Use Third, your analogy of whacking the throttle on the parking. Yeah, yeah, right. If, if you're the, the type of rider, you know the rider starts their bike up and goes, whoom, 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 30, 30, 30, 30. You understand? Over 70 points of lean angle, it'll start to have some problems. Another issue is your, your brother, young brother, just started riding. He hears you do that, and you jump on, he jumps on there and goes, whoom, whoom, and hurts himself. It'll be gravel, it'll be a cold tire, pick your excuse, rain, but that's the wrong deal. So everybody, this is, this is how you lead uh, with that, with the voice you have. Third thing we think counts uh, is what speed does to cornering radius, how speed affects cornering radius at a given lean angle. And a given lean angle could be, A, maybe it's raining and you can't lean over any further. B, could be your pipe is dragging, can't lean over any further. Could be you're brand new. You're brand new and you can't lean over any further. What you do with your speed affects your radius. Big deal? This is, I mean, any vehicle, any moving vehicle, right? Car, bike, boat, airplane, RV, you name it. Yeah, yeah. If you add speed, your radius opens. If you decrease speed, your radius tightens. So on a bike, at the same lean angle, you add speed, that circle's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. You close that throttle, you pick up brakes, that circle gets tighter at the same lean angle. Hmm. You're in your car, you hold it at one steering wheel, at the same speed, circle's there. Add speed, circle gets bigger. Decrease speed, circle gets smaller. Now why would we, you know, so, so it's common sense, Everybody right? Knows why, that. Would we, why would we talk about that? Because the biggest problem we see on the street is people not controlling their speed to match the radius of the corner. Mm -hmm. And when you're at a lean angle, when you're at the limit, whether it's because it's raining and this is max lean angle or you're dragging the pipe or you're just, you're at your own personal limit, the way we can decrease our radius is by decreasing our speed. Uh, we can do it by closing the throttle. Engine braking is a form of braking. However, it's not adjustable. We can't engine brake more in the middle of the corner. So that's why we go to the brakes. We control our radius by controlling our speed with the brakes. So why, why is turn four faster than turn 14? Much bigger radius corner. You all realize that, you see that, and we're gonna, we're gonna train you in a little different, different ways. So let's try this together. Put your hand up like this, please. For the last time in your life, close the throttle and say, I hope I make it. <laughs> right? You are, right? Yeah, if any of your engineers did that, right, the faster you go, the worse it gets. The worse it gets. You just... For a right, right, right. right. Seriously, seriously. So we hope, we hope we make it. That may be the last time you do this. Let's do this. Let's get our fingers ready. Get our fingers off the throttle, off the throttle drum. Get them up and ready. Now close the throttle to the brake lever and say, I guarantee you I make it. I guarantee, guarantee you I make it. And this is what changes your life. This is what makes you um, very, very consistent. It makes you very quick if that's what you want, but it also makes you very safe. You get on your friend's bikes and ride it better than they do because you never go like this and go, I know this corner will make it. You go like this. You go like this, you go to the brake lever, you might pick up a 1.2 1, 1. points. So let's say you do that for the rest of your life, but certainly today on the track and on the street. You come down to our corner, you roll off because you're nervous, you pick up the brakes, you tip it in, and you're into for the corner too slowly. Are you hurt? No. 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 Next weekend you might remember, I don't need that much brake for this corner, but you're not hurt because the number one place we're dying is where? Where? Right wide, wide corners. corners. You, gotta, you gotta know that. Mm -hmm. So the riders don't trail brake in, or when they come off the brakes, they go to the throttle, maybe they don't brake at all. Travis. Do you think there's an on-ramp or off-ramp in the world that doesn't either have skid marks on the asphalt or marks on the outside wall? <laughs> yep. Because, because they don't understand radius is mile an hour. We'll go to a track day and these boys, right? Number one in the, in the country, best in the country at some point in their lives. These boys are here on this apex, here on this apex, here on this apex. And the people that they're faster than that are here missing that apex every single time because their mile an hour is too high for this radius. So as simple as this sounds, radius is mile an hour, people aren't getting it. They're off the brakes too soon, they're not touching the brakes, but when they touch the throttle, they touch it too hard, and their mile an hour builds, and the bike runs wide. You said something just a couple minutes ago that I wanna extract yep. a little yep. bit. You said that the same techniques that make you safe also make you fast. Yep. I think that there's a big misconception in our sport that 
it's either safe or it's fast. But creating contact patch, controlling your speed, it creates a lap time and it makes you safer at the same time. So, Works so, hand in hand. Smooth yeah, is fast right. and fast right. is smooth. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. There you go. That's right, Jerry. And those those ideas. That's what makes the the, the police officers such good rider, good riders. And and uh, if you if you think you can win championships lying in the dirt, you cannot do it. You can't win a championship crashing. You think your family's going to be happy with you lying in the dirt? Yeah. It's going to be pretty tough. And this idea, there there. I think there's there's pretty much safe to say the people that y'all beat. You were going slower than them, mid corner in a couple corners on the racetrack. Why? How can you beat them going slower mid corner? It goes back to the you know who's first to wide open mm -hmm. throttle. You know people are trying to work on corner speed, corner speed, corner speed. Mid corner speed, I'm not so worried about. My straightaway speed after that corner is what's going to what's going to matter most. So I'll over slow it a little more, a couple more mile an hour to get better direction to make my straightaway longer and maximize it. Mm -hmm. And guess what? My tires don't wear out as quick. Mm -hmm. I have less lean angle for less amount of time and, and less risk. Because lean angle yeah. is risk. Yeah. Basically, who's on that throttle, full throttle first? first. Straighten up the okay. bike. It and might go. be a full second later that the throttle actually comes open, but the fact that you can accelerate all the way to wide open. Right, first, before the other guy. Safely, because you're taking right. away lean angle, that's what counts. And let's take this into your world today. You go to the brakes, as you're nervous, you can go around this tire, you think it's a 90 up toward Bjorn. You get in here with the brakes on, you get in here. When you get in here, you realize it tightens to where Kyle is. You leave your brakes on. So this idea that you leave the brake on until you're happy with your speed and direction, that is a game changer. And how can you do that? Well, because you're not flicking the bike in the corner. If you're going to flick the bike in the corner, boy, you better get off that brake pretty quickly, right? But if you're going to guide the bike in the corner, you can trail brake all the way down in there. And this is what changes you, because you're just getting this idea. Radius is a mile an hour. And I'll tell you, after the first session uh, at a new track, we come in and too fast here, missing the apex, too fast here, too slow here. The thing almost hit the inside curbing. And by the second session, we're rolling all based on this idea of radius equals miles per hour, okay? And what we're gonna do with you is get that idea. I control my speed into the corner with my brake lever, because it's easy to think, Brakes control one thing, and that is speed. And that's what a lot of you come in here, not at your level, but your readers come in thinking, I'm gonna go to my brakes because I'm going too fast. But in fact, brakes do two other things for us. What are they, Cody? Right, it's gonna change the geometry of the motorcycle. And again, it's this, this motorcycle is gonna steer best with the weight forward, but you're also uh, playing with that contact patch. And that's truly what I'm thinking about during qualifying, during racing, is I'm using my front brake, controlling that contact patch as long as I need it. And Jerry, this is why we would get you on the front brake more than the rear, because the front brake more directly controls geometry and contact patch, number one. And number two, we have better feel to our fingers mm -hmm. than our booted foot. Yeah. And that's why we would really push you toward the front brake. Um, not, not to replace the rear brake, but to be a little bit higher priority than the, than the rear brake. Yeah. So, radius of mile an hour, everybody good? Yep. If you need your bike to tighten its radius, should it speed up, stay the same, or slow down at speed? Slow down. Slow down at speed. Just get that. Take it out. So you, you'll run in here, you'll miss, you should be against the tire, and you'll miss it one lap. Should it this morning? Okay, next lap. I'm gonna go to the brakes earlier, a little more pressure, a little further down in the corner, and boom, you'll be on line. Okay. You'll be, you'll never go across the center line again, because you'll never give up on the brake lever. You'll run it down in there, and you'll be on the brake. Oh, the corner's tighter than I thought. You leave the brakes on. If you leave the brakes on, what's your radius gonna do? Tighten. Tighten. You'll, you'll, you'll miss, you'll, but you won't go across the center line ever again. This is what happens to our graduates. They're just done going across the center line. They're done with that kind of crazy ass off the brakes, flick it in stuff. They just guide it in there. Ooh, oh, I made that mistake. Let it turn, drive it out. That's why, it's, that's why we're sold out. That's why we're killing it. So, yeah. All right. So, fourth thing. What do you think? Are you ready for fourth thing? I think thing? there's just fourth thing out there. Okay, good. Let's do it out there. Okay, good. I think we show them our new road. Let's do it. You know, it's one thing to watch you ride the motorcycle, but to hear you articulate it here. Listen, teaching is an art. It really is. Because a lot of people know how to do stuff, but to be able to articulate it to other people and have them understand it and stay engaged. So once again, I appreciate you all. Yeah, well, thank thanks you. for being here, everybody. It's a thank you for having great me. life. Thank you for saying that. Do you want to do body real quick or do you want to go roll around? Do let's body go, Let's go check out the track. Let's do roll around. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's do this. If you don't mind real quick, let's, let's line up roughly speaking. And it's just rough because we're going to put you in with two, two, uh, another person. Let's go from pretty darn new rider, pretty darn new, to a little bit more advanced, to a little bit more advanced. Is, okay, there, is there, right there such a thing? Stay right there. Y'all okay? I'm advanced at <laughs> low speed riding. I haven't been on a winding road in eight or 10 years. 
So let's let so you you two ride together, and uh, we'll we'll give you the instructor to move two together. You two together? Is this good? Sure. Yeah. Good. Absolutely. And then you two together? Is that good? Two police officers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So you remember that. We'll, we'll get up there. Lieutenant. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yes, Lieutenant. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and here's what we'll do. Um, I think we're ready. We're going to go out there, get our gear on. We'll meet out by the bikes in five minutes or so. Uh, and we will start rolling around, getting a feel for things. And Oh, vans first. Vans first. That makes it easier. Okay, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna head into uh, one suburban and one minivan. Yeah. You get in that red blazer. I'm not getting that Cody driving. Cody, you driving that blazer? He liked that. This is gonna be a little more subtle, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Let's do that then. Let's meet. We're gonna get we're gonna get in our van and suburban, and we're gonna go look at the track and the, and the cars. Okay. So vans in two minutes. Here we okay. go. All right. All right. That was some awesome information. I'm pretty pretty crash course of how to operate a bike on the track and be safe. So definitely check it out. But right now we're going to be hopping in this truck and the Suburban. And we're going to do, I guess, a lap around the track just to kind of get an idea where the turns are and uh, to see how it is before we get on the track. So it's uh, a lot of fun, a lot of information, a lot of great information.